Mole calculations. There are two important equations we have to know. On the left, moles is equal to mass divided by MR. And another one, on the right, we have moles is equal to number of particles divided by Avogadro's constant, which by now you should know is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Okay, so let's start with question one. Again, I recommend you pause the video at the start of every question and have a go yourself. So in this question, we want to work out the mass in grams of a single sodium atom. So we can use the equation number of moles is equal to mass over MR. We know the MR of sodium, it's 23. However, we haven't been given the number of moles. Instead, we've been given the number of particles. In this case, we have one sodium atom. That means to work out moles, we can use our other equation, Moles is equal to particles over Avogadro's constant. So in this scenario, we have one sodium atom. So the number of moles will be one over Avogadro's constant. We can place all of this over here so that we have the following. And then times through by 23. And that should give us the mass which is 3.82 times 10 to the power of minus 23. Question two, which sample contains the most molecules? So in this case, we're trying to work out number of particles. So we're going to use our number of particles equation. Molecules is a type of particle. So we're gonna rearrange it such that we get number of particles is equal to Avogadro's constant times by number of moles. So let's start with A. In this one, we've already been given the number of molecules. So we can move on to the next one. In B, we've been given the mass of oxygen. So that means that we can use our equation mass over MR to work out moles. Then once we have moles, we can just times that by Avogadro's constant and we should get number of particles. So to work out moles, we're going to do mass, which is one, over 32, which is the MR of O2. And then once we have moles, we can times it by Avogadro's constant to give us number of molecules. Moving on to C. Now again, here we've been given mass. However, the mass is in milligrams. So we're going to divide it by a thousand to turn it into grams first. That gives us 0 0.065 grams. And just like in part B, we're gonna work out moles by doing mass over MR. The MR of H2 is simply one plus one, two. So now this fraction will give us the number of moles. So then to work out molecules, we're going to times this by Avogadro's constant. And that gives us the following. And moving on to the last one. For part D, we've already got number of moles. So that means all we have to do is just times it by Avogadro's constant. Moving on to part D. Here we've already got the number of moles. So all we have to do is number of moles times Avogadro's constant. And that gives us the following number of particles. Okay, so we can see that the answer is going to be A. Question three. A gas cylinder contains five kilograms of propane. How many propane molecules are in the cylinder? So remember, we're looking for number of molecules, which means we're going to use the equation number of particles, in this case molecules, is equal to Avogadro's constant times by number of moles. We haven't been given the number of moles. So to work out moles, we're going to use the fact that they've told us we have five kilograms of propane. Five kilograms is equal to 5,000 grams. And the MR of propane, C3H8, is equal to 44. So mass over MR gives us moles. And then we can do moles times Avogadro's constant. So number of particles is going to equal to the following. And we can simplify it. And this matches with C. Okay, moving on. Question four, which of these contains the greatest number of atoms? Now be careful, 
they've told us here to work out the number of atoms. However, all of these iodine, phosphorus, carbon dioxide and ammonia are molecules. An iodine molecule has two iodine atoms. And we know this because we should know the following elements are all diatomic. A phosphorus molecule, on the other hand, P4, has four phosphorus atoms. Carbon dioxide is CO2 and ammonia is NH3. Since we're on this topic, we might as well look at this picture. So make sure you memorize phosphorus exists as a P4 molecule and sulfur exists as S8 molecules. So a sulfur molecule is the largest. Okay, so how do we tackle this question? Well, first of all, we'll start off by working out the number of molecules in each scenario. And to do that, we know we have to do moles times by Avogadro's constant. Once we have the number of molecules, we will then times it by how many atoms are in each molecule. For example, in the case of iodine, we'll times the number of molecules by two to give us the number of atoms. Since there are two iodine atoms in an iodine molecule. For phosphorus, we'll times it by four. For carbon dioxide and ammonia, we'll times it by three and four respectively. Carbon dioxide has three atoms, one carbon and two oxygens. And ammonia has four atoms, one nitrogen and three hydrogens. Okay, starting with iodine. First of all, we're going to divide it by 1000 to get the mass in grams. Then, to work out moles, we're going to divide mass by MR. Iodine's MR, I2, is 258.8. Then, we're going to divide it by the MR of I2, which is 253.8. So this fraction will tell us the moles. Then, we'll times it by Avogadro's constant, and together, all of this will give us the number of molecules. So we now know how many molecules of iodine we have. Next, times this by 2 to work out the number of atoms. Okay, let's apply this to B, C and D. So again, with B, we're going to times by 1000 first to convert the kilograms into grams. Once we have the mass, we're then going to divide it by the MR of P4, which is 124. So this fraction is going to tell us the moles, and then times it by Avogadro's constant, which will give us the number of molecules of P4. Then times this by 4, and that will give us how many individual phosphorus atoms we have. With part C, we're going to first divide it by 1000 to convert the milligrams into grams. And then just like before, divide it by the MR of CO2. Times this by Avogadro's constant, and that will give us the number of carbon dioxide molecules. Remember that one carbon dioxide molecule has three atoms. So now we have the number of atoms in that many moles of carbon dioxide. And finally, with D, we're going to times it by a thousand to convert the kilograms into grams. And then divide it by the MR of ammonia, which is 17. Times this by Avogadro's constant to give us the number of molecules and then times by 4, since there are 4 atoms in a single ammonia molecule. Which gives us the following answer. So we can see that D is the answer for this question. Question 5. What is the number of atoms in 0.01 moles of ammonia? So this question is very similar to the previous one. Now the correct answer is D. And the way you should have gotten that is by working out first number of molecules of ammonia, which is moles times by Avogadro's constant, and then timesing it by four to work out number of atoms, since there are four atoms in one molecule of ammonia. Question six. How many protons are there in six grams of nitrogen gas? Remember, we're talking about protons, which are found in the nucleus of an atom. A single nitrogen atom has seven protons in its nucleus. And we know that because of the proton number. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to work out how many nitrogen atoms we have. 
And then we're going to times the number of atoms by seven because each atom has seven protons. And that will tell us how many protons there are in total. So part one, to work out how many nitrogen atoms there are, we're going to use the same technique as the previous questions. So we have six grams of nitrogen. And remember, nitrogen is N2. So we're going to work out moles by doing mass over MR, then times it by Avogadro's constant. But remember, this is the number of molecules. We want to work out how many atoms there are. Since there are two atoms in nitrogen, we're going to times it by two. And that will give us the following number of atoms. Okay, so we know that in six grams of nitrogen gas, we have 2.58 times 10 to the power of 23 nitrogen atoms. So next, we're going to do number of atoms times by seven to work out how many protons we have in total, which gives us the following. So the answer is going to be C. Question seven, which one of the following contains the greatest number of moles of methanol? For part A, we've been given the number of molecules of methanol. So to work out moles, we're going to do number of particles over Avogadro's constant. In this case, they've told us how many particles of methanol we have. So all we have to do is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of 22 over Avogadro's constant. And that gives us the number of moles. For part B, we've been given mass. So we're going to work out moles by doing mass over MR. The mass is 3.3 grams, and the MR is given in the question, 32, which gives us 0.94 moles. For part C, we've been given the volume, temperature, and pressure of methanol vapor. So we're going to use the ideal gas equation, which is PV equals NRT. Since we want to work out moles, we're going to rearrange this such that moles is equal to PV over RT. However, let's convert this kilopascals into pascals by timesing it by a thousand. And then we can put it into our equation. So we have pressure at 100,000 pascals. The volume is 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus three meters cubed. And at the bottom, we have R, which is the gas constant, 8.31 and temperature 300 Kelvin. And this gives us 0.1 moles. Finally, for part D, we have a solution. And this big M represents moles per decimeter cubed. So we can work out moles by doing concentration times volume. However, notice that the volume is in centimeters cubed. So to fix that, all we have to do is divide it by a thousand. So we're gonna get the following answer, 0 0.105 moles. And therefore A is the answer, the largest number of moles. Question eight. In an airbag, sodium azide, which is NaN3, decomposes to form sodium metal and nitrogen gas. The sodium metal then reacts with potassium nitrate, which is somewhere in the airbag and together to produce even more nitrogen gas. If two moles of sodium azide react in this way, how many molecules of N2 will we have by the end of the reaction? Okay, so we wanna work out molecules of nitrogen. Remember, to do that, all we have to do is moles times by Avogadro's constant. So we produce nitrogen up here, but also down here. That means we're going to have to add the moles of both of those together, giving us the total moles. And then we can times that by Avogadro's constant. So we start with two moles of NaN3. First, let's work out how many moles of nitrogen we've produced. We can see that the ratio of sodium azide and nitrogen is a two to three ratio. So that means we'll produce three moles of nitrogen gas. We've also produced two moles of sodium. These two moles will move on and react with potassium nitrate. So don't get confused about the 10. That's just there to show us the balancing for the new equation. However, we have two moles of sodium. 
Okay, so sodium to nitrogen ratio is 10 to 1. That means that we're going to produce 0.2 moles of nitrogen gas. So in total, if we add these together, we're going to get 3.2 moles of nitrogen gas. If we times that by Avogadro's constant, we will get the following number of nitrogen molecules. So the answer is going to be B. Question 9. So we have a fridge, and from this fridge, some freon gas, which is CF3Cl, has leaked into a room. The room has a volume of 100 meters cubed. Let's assume that the gas is evenly mixed throughout the room. How many molecules of freon gas will there be in a small section of 500 centimeters cubed of this big room? So we're going to break this down into the following. Number one, we're going to work out the total moles of CF3Cl. We have the mass and we also know the equation of the gas. So to work out moles, we're going to do mass over MR. But first, let's convert this into grams by timesing it by a thousand. So we have the mass and now we're going to divide it by the MR of CF3Cl, which is 104.5. So this fraction represents the number of moles of CF3Cl. Now we're going to times it by Avogadro's constant, and that will give us the total number of molecules, which is the following. This is how many molecules we have in the whole room of 100 meters cubed. However, how many would there be in 500 centimeters cubed? So now all we have to do is a bit of ratio. First, let's convert this from centimeters cubed to meters cubed by dividing it by 10 to the power of 6. That gives us 0 0.0005 meters cubed. Okay, so we're going from 100 meters cubed to 0 0.0005 meters cubed. So divide by 100 and times by the following. So we do that on the right and we do the same thing on the left which will give us 5.1 times 10 to the power of 15 molecules. Okay, final question. So in this one, I'm just going to let you have a go and let's see if you get the correct answer. And the answer is B. Well done if you got it right. Hey guys. If that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.